In this video, we will talk about one of the techniques that will help you analyze closed loop forms of a system, the root locus. The root locus technique is a graphical technique for examining how the roots of a system change with variation of certain system parameters, commonly a gain within a feedback system. It is typical for one to face difficulty when facing closed loop control systems. They are hard to comprehend and it relies heavily upon mathematics. However, the root locus will assist you in analyzing these closed loop control systems and this video will help you understand and get a good grasp of that. So let us start by giving you an example. As we can see from the illustration of the open loop block diagram, the poles of the open loop transfer function can be easily determined since the poles do not change with changes in system gain. However, if we see closed loop systems, the poles are much more difficult to determine. They cannot be found without factoring the closed loop system's characteristic polynomial. And since the system's transient response and stability are dependent upon the poles of T of S, we don't know the system's performance unless we factor out the determinator for specific values of K. The root locus, however, will give us a better illustration of the poles of T of S as K varies in respect to time. So, let us discuss the properties of the root locus. What we mean here by properties are how the root locus behaves and how we can analyze the root locus in a mathematical approach. So with these properties, we'll be able to make a sketch of the root locus by giving an example of a second order polynomial, and later on, we'll be able to make a sketch of higher order root locus systems without factoring out the denominator or characteristic polynomial of the system transfer function. So recalling the earlier slide, we see that the closed loop systems block diagram, we we obtain the transfer function t of s is equal to k times g of s divided by 1 plus k times g of s times h of s. Now, the properties of the root locus in question can be derived from this equation. We can get the properties from this characteristic polynomial, which is 1 plus k times g of s times h of s. Assume a pole s exists when the characteristic polynomial equals 0. We see that 1 plus k times g of s times h of s is equal to 0, and therefore k times g of s times h of s can be rearranged to obtain the value of minus 1. Now, the value of minus 1 is represented as a polar form, and that means we see that there are two values, the magnitude and the angle. k times g of s times h of s is equal to minus 1, and therefore equal to 1 times the angle 2 times k plus 1 times by 180 degrees, where k is 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, etc. Alternatively, s is a closed loop pole if it can satisfy the absolute of k times g of s times h of s is equal to 1, and if the angle k times g of s times h of s is a multiple, is an odd multiple of 180 degrees. These two criteriums are critical. The equation, the absolute of k times g of s times h of s is equal to 1, is called the magnitude criterion, and the angle k times g of s times h of s is equal to an odd multiple of 180 is called the angle criterion. The two main criterions when determining the properties of a root locus. These equations imply that if a value of s is substituted into the function k times g of s times h of s and meets both criterions, the value of s is a system pole for particular values of k. Now, we can determine the magnitude and the angles of the roots of the system. The magnitude of the system is equal to the product of zero lengths divided by the product of pole lengths. The angle of the system is equal to the sum of the zero angles minus the sum of the pole angles. To get a better understanding, let us simply see an example. Given a unity feedback system that has the forward transfer function or open loop transfer function g of s equals to k times s plus 3 times s plus 4 divided by s plus 1 times s plus 2. Now, let us consider a point at our arbitrary point, let's say minus 2 plus g3. If you don't know where that is, you can draw it first on the s plane. 
as we can see the roots of the system are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. We see that the poles are minus 1 and minus 2, and the zeros are minus 3 and minus 4. Traditionally and commonly, the root locus represents the poles marked by the x symbol, and zeros are represented by a circle symbol. Then we place the point minus 2 plus g3 as a pole at the plane. From the early explanation, we knew that the poles of the system will change with variations of system gain. The question is, is minus 2 plus g3 a pole for a certain gain in this closed loop system? To answer this, we first draw straight lines from the old system roots to the new pole. This will result in each of the roots having an angle relative to that new pole. We then compute the angle criterion of the system. The angle of the system is equal to the sum of zero angle minus the sum of the pole angles and must equal to an odd multiplication of 180 degrees. After we compute the value of each angle, we can then calculate the sum of the angles. The sum that we get is minus 70.55 degrees, which is not equal to any odd multiplication of 180 degrees. We conclude that minus 2 plus g3 is not a pole in this closed loop system since it does not satisfy the angle criterion. Let us see another, another example. Let us consider the arbitrary point minus 2 plus j times the square root of 2 divided by 2. If we repeat the previous steps, we see that when we calculate the angle criterion of this particular point, the angle of the system will add up to 180 degrees. If you want, you can try the calculation on your own. However, from the results, we know that the point minus 2 plus j, square root of 2 divided by 2, is definitely a point on the root locus for a certain value of gain, because it satisfies the angle criteria. We can then determine the value of gain k, so that the point in question satisfies the magnitude criteria. From earlier, we know that k is equal to 1 over the absolute of js times h of s, which is equal to 1 over m, which is also equal to the products of the pole lengths over the product of the zero lengths. Similar as before, we plot the roots of the open loop system, then place the point minus 2 plus j square root of 2 divided by 2. We then draw straight lines from each root to the new pole, and name the lines L1, L2, L3, and L4. We now know that these are the pole lengths and these are the zero lengths and the k is the product of pole lengths divided by zero lengths. We see that k is equal to 0 0.33 and minus 2 plus j square root 2 over 2 is a closed loop pole of the system at gain k equal to 0 0.33. Okay, next we will proceed to the next segment which will teach you how to draw the root locus.